here with you rangers getting ready to start a three city road trip uh, beginning in anaheim then a brief stop in arizona and then wrapping it up in oakland before returning home uh, one of the bigger developments over the last few games of this most recent homestand leody Tavares. Uh, the fact that you know forget results the fact that he started to look competitive looked alive uh, in the box you know we we've seen the defense we've seen the speed but earlier this year when he was on the team to begin the year and then even the few days around a week after his recall it was just kind of more of the same a guy who just looked totally lost to the plates and uh you know i i don't know how much of it's physical versus mental but uh, he did have a productive game in the Rangers' win over Houston on Sunday, even without a hit. He had a walk, a sack fly, or excuse me, a sack bunt, and then a line out to center. And so there were at least some things for a guy who was hitless uh, since returning. There were at least some positives for him to sleep on that night. And then he comes back in the very next game and uh, starts mashing the ball. A couple homers since, uh, a couple doubles. And we've seen the speed in action on the bases. You know, you can't really see it in action when you're not getting on the bases. But, you know, infield hit that he beat out and just the base running. You know, he's 22 years old. He'll turn 23 this week. Uh, and I know it's, it's tough when a guy is up at the big league level, no matter what their age is. Uh, when they're struggling, it's always tough to see the future and the possibility of success, especially when – you know, someone was struggling the way Leody was to begin the year. But I think we need to remember there are only five or six guys, 22 or younger, who are contributing in a significant way at the major league level this year. All right. Uh, you don't get many 22 year olds at the big league level. And so it's not to say that, you know, it's okay when he struggles. It's just a reminder that there are a lot of really good baseball players who, weren't even in triple a at 22, maybe not even in double a at 22, if they were drafted out of college, you know, certainly uh, most major league baseball players are not major leaguers at 22 years old. Uh, look at the all-star team from this year in both the American and national leagues. I'm sure most of those guys are not big leaguers at 22. So Leodi's ahead of schedule and growing pains are to be expected. What was not to be expected was that he would, come into uh, the season and just, I don't know, dominate or, or you know, have guaranteed uh, progress from what he demonstrated last year. Last year, he was up because of the COVID season. He would not have normally been up if it was a regular year. He would have been getting at-bats in AAA, but AAA wasn't a thing last year. He had never gotten any at-bats in AAA until he was sent down this year. So uh, I think what we've seen from Leody here is, is great. It's something to follow for the rest of the month. Probably what I am most looking forward to following the rest of the month is Leody Tavares' progress and whether or not we go into the off season, at least feeling good about the foundation. I, I the, the end of season numbers aren't going to be good. I want to know what the end of September numbers look like. And I'm talking about the surface numbers. I'm also talking about the beneath the surface numbers. Uh, Glenn Otto is going to start against Shohei Otani tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch that matchup. Uh, looking forward to seeing you know, how Glenn Otto performs, obviously, his major league debut was great. The slider was key. You know, it's interesting. A.J. Alexi and Glenn Otto both made their major league debuts this last homestand. Both went five scoreless innings. Both added a slider this offseason. That's not to say that now everyone needs to add a slider if they don't have one. I just thought it was interesting that both guys uh, progressed this year compared to years past with the help of, maybe not solely because of, but with the help of an addition uh, the addition of the slider. And for Glenn Otto, all seven of his strikeouts came on that very pitch. So uh, it was super, super uh, effective. All right, we're not going to get into it right now, but a little tease next week, Trevor Story or Carlos Correa? Who would you rather have? We'll kind of weigh the pros and cons of uh, the possibility of signing either of those guys. So we'll do that next week. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Talk to you later.